Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to go over um, some of the basic Linux commands that are important to have and just uh, general understanding to be able to navigate around the Linux command line. So long ago before we had graphical user interfaces and the like and cursors and mice you had a terminal and the terminal was a way that you could actually interact with the system, be able to navigate through folders, um, view files, edit files, and run a bunch of other commands and stuff. So what we're presented here with is just a simple prompt and the prompt is actually something in Linux that you can change. Um, you can change your name or, or what is displayed right here. In this case I've got my name, I've got my host that I'm running on, and uh, kind of my current folder. Now one of the things that's kind of unique is this uh, tilde there which means that you're in the, the user's home folder so on typical Linux machines the user's home folder might be under slash home slash you know in this case Josh or um, slash root if you're a root user so um, when you hit enter in the command line with nothing uh, in there it actually just drops you down to the next level but um, some of the most basic commands that you'll be running with is uh, ls which does a listing of the files in a certain folder that you're in so if I do an ls you can see um, these are different files and folders the folders end with slash the files will typically be um, in this case white I've got some coloring on it so it shows uh, kind of your your different file types and, and folders and such um, so you can type ls. Uh, another way that you can actually view the listing in your files is actually add uh, arguments to the ls command. So one common argument is dash l um, listed in kind of more of a, a standard list and you can see now instead of them being in a, a table with um, kind of these different columns you actually have them in a straight up list and uh, going to be in alphabetical alphabetical order and we're actually going to get a little bit more information in there. So let me walk you through really quick what this different information is. Um, on the left is the the type of the file it is uh, or folder. So in this case the D stands for directory and then you're going to have permissions and I'm going to come back to permissions in just a second. Um, the next you'll have is um, this number one here which I'm honestly frankly not sure exactly what this is uh, right here but the next one you have is the owner uh, the group that the file belongs to so a file or a folder always belongs to an owner uh, which in this case is me and then the next one would be group and on this uh, git bash terminal that I'm on which is just Windows um, kind of a emulation of the terminal we have the group and, and since I don't Windows doesn't quite do groups as well um, it'll show this. Um, the next one we have is, is the file size that that is taken up a folder. In this case is not really taken up any size but an actual file like these bin files um, take up 15 and this is in bytes. So remember 8 bits per byte uh, it's 15 bytes. These ones down here um, are quite a bit larger and you can kind of figure it out by there's your kilobytes and then we have megabytes so we're at 40 megabytes for for this nt user dot that um, and then the next would be the last time that the file was updated so it'd be kind of a timestamp so December 29 2022 this folder had something updated into it okay so that's uh, ls there's there's other ones you can look at um, you can uh, do a dash h uh, well actually let's see here uh, dash dash help let's see there you go. So ls dash dash help will kind of allow us to see the different types of uh, command line arguments you can give to it. So you'll have your short options and your long options right there. Um, so you can do a dash a to see all the files and this does not ignore files that start with a period because normally those are kind of hidden files with that. Um, and so you can see all files and then if you get down to the L that is uh, the one that we're doing use a long listing format um, so a lot of times when I'm actually in, in folders and stuff I don't typically look at it at LS because I want to see all the details I want to see the file size I want to see the permissions on it and such so 
Uh, we're going to jump back to LS, and yeah, you usually do dash AL, um, which allows us to now see some of these hidden files and folders that aren't normally shown here. So we can see we've got uh, all these dot folders and dot files um, in there. Uh, let's really quick jump back to the permissions of these uh, listings. So um, this is stands for the read, the write, and then the last one is for X for execute that you see right there. Um, so this says that it always goes the owner of the file, and then it goes the group that the file belongs to, and then it goes to everybody else. So people that are not in that group or not the owner of the file, what permissions do they have? And so you can have a read permission to be able to look at what the file contents are, write permission to be able to change it or delete it, and then execute permissions, which would mean you can run it as kind of a program in there or not. Um, and so in this case, this yarn.lock has the owner, which is Josh, um, can read to it and write to it, but it cannot execute it. So it's not really an executable type of file. Um, people that belong to this group, group 19 or 197, 121, can read from it, and then other everybody else can uh, read from it. So we have uh, those those things in there. Um, one thing that that you do when you want to um, shorten the keystrokes that you want to. So for example, if I do an ls dash al um, it kind of gets long to have to remember that and so a lot of people uh, use what's called aliases so if I type just the word alias this shows my current aliases that I have and, and what it allows me to do is type LL and I'm actually gonna what's gonna run for an actual command is LS dash AL dash dash color so if I type LL I get this output and so it's obviously a shortcut cut to type LL versus LS dash AL. Um, so that's kind of aliases. Um, one other thing we're going to talk about real quick is kind of folders and stuff. Um, so in here, when we look at our, our file system, we have this folder called videos and it's a directory. And so I can change my current folder, which is my home folder into the videos directory by doing cd space and then videos um, that jumps into the videos folder and now you can see down there that i have the videos folder i can type ll and see the files in there if i wanted to go back up a folder because each time you go into the folder you're kind of going deeper and deeper into the nested folder stack um, you would type cd space dot dot um, and uh, you can chain these things together so you, in this case I see that in my videos folder I have another folder called capture so I could actually type videos captures and hit enter um, that jumps me right into the videos captures folder or again I can do dot dot slash or dot dot and go up a folder but let's say I wanted to, to go two folders up the way you do that is do cd space dot dot slash dot dot and therefore I'm back to my home folder. Um, one thing you can do, because once you get into these folders and you might not really know the, the entire folder path, you can actually type the command pwd and it gives you the entire directory chain of what you're in. So I'm on my C drive, under my users, under Josh, under videos and capture. So that's a, a handy command when you're trying to figure out which, which directory you're actually in. Um, the next thing I want to do is go over a couple other things you might be doing. So um, when you want to look through your history of commands you've typed, you can use the up arrow on your keyboard and it goes back and forth through uh, your commands that you've typed before. Um, real quick, if you want to see kind of the history of all the commands you type, you can type history and it gives you kind of the history of, of all these different commands. Um, but let's say if I just press the up arrow, you can see there's history is number 541, um, 540 was going to be PWD, so I'm hit up again, PWD, and likewise. And then you can actually hit down arrow if you wanted to go back the opposite direction. So down to the CDs, down to CD, doc, uh, back to the PWD, and then finally back to history. If you ever want to kind of cancel out and actually not run this command, you'd hit the, the keyboard shortcut or 
control C to kind of escape out of that without actually executing there. Um, if you're if you know what you're trying to look for, say like in my history, I, I might have ran this command nano read me. One quick way to, to get back there instead of having to hit up arrow, you know, 30 times to get there, I'm going to control C that you could do um, control R and it allows you to reverse search through your history and then you just start typing out say the first couple letters of what you remember last typing like nano and there it instantly pops up and shows the command and you can acknowledge it by hitting the enter keyboard or you can hit control R again and it'll keep searching for that that failed thing so for example I have SSH logger, SSH OTC, OT sand. Let's say I want to uh, reverse search for that SSH, and there's logger, but no, it's not the one I want to do. I actually want to do OT sand, so I hit Control R, OT sand, OT sand without a D, and Riddick uh, SSH. And then if I'm ready for it, I hit Enter. If I want to cancel it, Control C to cancel that. Um, so I want to go quickly talk about kind of files, being able to kind of edit files um, really simply and be able to um, search through your file system for maybe some text inside that file. Um, one way we can quickly uh, uh, edit a file is to echo um, some text like uh, this is wonderful uh, into a test dot text file so let me let's go over what's happening here so echo allows you to tell the the terminal here to take the text that is in this uh, quotations here and this is a redirect or a, um, a pipe operator not a pipe but a, a redirect that text into in this case we're just going to give it a, a new file name test.txt so if I hit enter we'll have and if I type uh, ll we'll have a file in here called test.txt. Where is it? Right there. So test.txt it is 18 bytes in uh, length, and it, it has these rewrite permissions on it. Um, so now, let's say you know that there's some file out there um, that uh, has some specific text in it. How would you search for that? Well, the, the one of the most popular ones is the uh, command called grep, um, which does a, a, a recursive kind of search through all these different files, um, trying to find text inside of it. Um, but uh, so you can type grep and um, search for maybe the term wonderful. And then you say, well, which files or folders do you want it to search was the last kind of argument. And if you do a star, that means search all the files that it has. If we search that, it's going to argue that uh, or say that this is uh, a bunch of directories. But if we actually look here, it says, hey, in test.txt, it found this is wonderful, this line of this thing. So grep's kind of a powerful tool to be able to search through files. Um, uh, in future ones, we'll talk about another one called AG, which uh, is called Silver uh, Searcher, which is actually a really improved version of grep. Um, pretty neat. Uh, but um, uh, if you do grep-r and kind of give it the wonderful and star, that will actually do a recursive search and actually step inside of these folders. So why it's complaining about saying, hey, this is a directory, it means it's not going to step inside them and recursively search down through all of them. If I do a dash R, it'll take a little while, probably because it's going through all those directories and I probably have a lot of folders in there and it will, you know, maybe eventually return back to it. If I hit control C, I can cancel that command and just kind of get out of it right where it's at. Um, so that's grep. And then let's say I want to look at, I, I do an LL and I see test.txt there and I want to look at the contents of this test uh, file. One way of doing that is to have it print out to the screen using the, the terminal command called cat. So if I type cat test.txt, it will actually take the contents of this file and spit it right out, out to the screen. Um, let's look at one a little bit larger, like maybe this yarn.lock. If I type cat yarn.lock, hit enter, 
um, there's the text that was inside that file. Now you can also cat a um, a binary file. So let's just look for one real quick. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's let's take this guy. Um, I can copy him. Uh, one one thing that's kind of cool is on a terminal you can use the tab key to autocomplete uh, files that you're looking for or maybe folder paths. So if I um, start typing uh, advanced with cat, say advanced, and if I hit the tab key, it will jump right there and start auto-completing it. But notice that there's a couple different files that all start with advanced IP scanner. Um, and so it stopped the autocomplete once it found um, a difference between these, these files. And so I would either have to type the next keyword, which is alias. Um, uh, let's do Mac. So I'd come down here and hit M and hit tab and it finishes it. Um, and if we hit cat on that, you can see there is the, the file kind of in a, like a hexadecimal binary format. And so it looks a little funky there with some funny characters on it. Um, if I come back to this though, and kind of going back to the tab complete, if I come here, one thing you can do is you can double tap tab uh, quickly and it gives you your available options for that. So I wouldn't have to have scrolled back up. I can hit uh, there, hit tab, and enter, and get my file out. Um, so that's, I think, all I wanted to cover in this quick first basic command line uh, video. There's going to be a number of other ones where we're kind of going into some more advanced command line topics. Um, but these are the ones that are, are very good to know at this point. So thank you.